so again, my name is Marcus Ford. I'm the chairperson of um, Brisbane Flypath Community Alliance, and um, I'm really um, um, pleased to see so many of you, uh, uh, even on a Sunday um, afternoon, um, that made time available to join us here for this um, for this webinar. Now, um, I'd also like to begin by by acknowledging the traditional owners of um, the land where I'm meeting um, you. Uh, you might be in different spots, but here for me, it's the Yagara and the Turbal people, um, uh, north and south of the Brisbane River. And I pay respects to elders past, present and, and emerging. Now, I haven't prepared um, formal slides. I didn't think for a Sunday afternoon, we wanted to go through kind of a lecture material, but there's a number of kind of um, um, campaign material that I'm just gonna share with you through a browser window. So it's based on the two active campaigns that we are running right now. And we also got um, Max Chandler Mather, um, the MP um, for um, Griffith um, with us today. He is busy moving, he just mentioned. And so we also want to make sure that um, he can um, brief us on what's happening with regards to the private members bill that was mentioned in the Facebook group a couple of times. and then um, we'll release Max again because he's busy um, moving within his um, electorate. So we might actually do this first, if that's all right, and then we can have questions for Max specifically on the private members bill, if that's okay. Great, take it away, Max. Thanks, Marcus, and uh, thanks everyone for having me. Uh, so basically what I'll do is just give you a bit of a briefing on uh, the process of the private members bill and when we'll be moving it. Uh, and uh, also give you let you know that we're going to be having a little bit of a briefing about the bill as well and also seeking feedback on it. So basically what's happening now is that for those of you who don't know, or you may remember uh, last year we draft, drafted a private members bill to do three things. Uh, enact a Sydney airport style curfew on Brisbane airport with slightly different times. Our curfew would be from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m introduce a cap on flights of 45 flights per hour in between that. And uh, third, compel the minister to uh, to enact a long-term operating plan uh, and slot management over Brisbane airports, again, similar to Sydney. Um, uh, and that process of um, producing that bill involved quite a lot of consultation with the community. We had online briefings and feedback as well as um, in person. And then ultimately Adam Bant moved that in the House of Representatives, a uh, private member's bill. So what's happening now is we are taking that bill uh, and we, it's with the parliamentary drafters right now being updated. There's a few technical things that need to be updated just because timelines have shifted. But by and large, the bill that we're drafting is exactly the same as the one that we drafted last time. Uh, Libby is the portfolio holder, so her policy person is handling the liaison with um, the parliamentary drafters and those drafters are provided by parliament. Uh, the plan at this point is to move that bill in the House of Reps again in September, just as another way of dialing up the pressure on the major parties and making clear and uh, forcing them to adopt a position on this or at the very least confront um, their lack of action. Um, what we do plan to do though is host a longer form briefing on the bill and the technical aspects of it um, uh, on the 30th of August. Uh, and I, I, I might chuck just an RSVP link in there if anyone's interested in coming along, but we'll widely circulate it as well. Uh, and the purpose of the briefing is twofold. One, to give you a more uh, technical overview of the bill and its operations and its effects, but also to seek some strategic feedback as well, which we're very open to either way. And that basically that strategic feedback is, um, do we need to tweak either the 45 flights per hour cap, either up or down, uh, or um, shift the curfew times uh, uh, either way. Uh, one strategic argument that's been considered at the moment is do we shift the curfew time um, from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., keeping it to go going to 6 a.m. To, to be in line with Sydney uh, Airport? Uh, and then maybe do we, um, for instance, uh, at all increase um, the uh, cap on flights, given the growth in um, air traffic after that and Brisbane Airport Corporation, Corporation going around lying and claiming that any cap would somehow prevent flights from going to Rockhampton, um, which is, of course, is a complete furphy. Um, 
Uh, we're very open to either way. The only strategic argument for um, shifting it a little bit is to strengthen our argument that all we're asking for is what Sydney Airport already has, which dials up the pressure and honest and mostly actually Labor haven't really had an answer to that other than the sort of usual lines. Um, uh, but we're also very open to keeping it the same. Frankly, from our perspective, that would be a decision for the broader community, BFPCA, uh, feedback. Um, but we wanted to put that option out there and let people know they actually had a chance to have input in the bill and make technical changes as well. So that briefing will be a conversation around that. Uh, our plan is to move it in the September sitting weeks in the House of Representatives. Um, Libby would move it as the portfolio holder um, for uh, transport, Minister for Transport and Infrastructure, um, uh, and Stephen and I would also give speeches in Parliament um, supporting it as well. Uh, you, we would each only get a few minutes to speak, though, because of the nature of Parliament's rules. Um, what we have been doing on the background is reaching out um, to the LNP to see if we could find any common ground, because if we could, um, we'd be tempted to try and move the bill in the Senate instead of the House of Representatives. Um, because at the very least we might we could have a chance of passing it through the Senate uh, and um, sending it to the House and that would put a lot of pressure on Labor. As yet we haven't been able to find any substantive common ground. I know I'm not sure I think BFPCA may have met with um, Peter Dutton but um, we're going to continue that process and I think there's an, another conversation down the line. It doesn't solve the problem but dials up the pressure again around whether or not we can enact some compensation scheme. Um, uh, which I think at the very least places a cost burden on Brisbane Airport Corporation, uh, which again is a form of economic pressure. So that's a conversation ongoing. And I actually think in the, our briefing, we might leave open some space for some people to suggest other legislative changes we could pursue that might actually garner LNP support. Um, so that's where we're at. Uh, we will do some media around that then as well. Um, you probably noticed that Brisbane Airport Corporation uh, uh, launched a very dishonest attack on, on me and Stephen, um, uh, which is as is their want. At one point, um, at the very least, it was so badly misreported in the Curie Mail, we almost considered uh, formally asking for a change. But I think that's, again, a sign that they're at least feeling some form of pressure. Um, so I'll leave that there. I don't want to take up all of your meeting, um, but I'm very happy to answer any questions, uh, either about technical aspects of the bill now um, or uh, um, uh, uh, or about the strategy around moving it in the house, media, other work that we're doing around flight noise. Right, thank you. Thank you, Max. Um, I haven't seen anyone pose any questions in the chat, but um, is there anyone interested in, in maybe just unmuting themselves and asking Max directly? And whilst that's happening, maybe you want to just summarize what you'd like people to do right now? Is it at the moment just sit and wait until there's further announcements or would you like already people to, for instance, reach out to their um, federal MP, for instance, if the federal MP in some cases is a, a liberal person, to then ask them and put the you know pressure on them and say, are you going to come out in support of this, considering that the scorecard that the um, coalition responded to last year did leave that open, that didn't rule it out like Labour? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what we're going to do um, in the lead up to the briefing is develop a bit of a um, comms um, and pressure strategy. Uh, and uh, I think um, we might release an early draft of the bill and then get everyone to contact their local MP in particular if it's a Liberal MP to request that they support. I think that's excellent idea, Marcus. Is that a plane going over your, your house right now? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I've, 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 um, in solidarity with everyone, I've um, incidentally moved um, more aggressively under the flight path. Um, well done. <laughs> um, uh, for better or for worse. Um, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I, and I think we'll also we'd like to target the Labor senators as well, um, who have been very vocal in sort of um, being cheeky about it. And actually, Graham Perrett um, in Morton, um, who we know, um, is feeling a bit of pressure about this. I was in the house, I was in the Federation chamber giving a speech and he got up and started having a go at me because um, I didn't catch the, I, I was campaigning on flight noise, but I didn't elect to catch the train down to Canberra every time we were, um, which is just, um, it speaks to the sort of childish way they're engaging with the debate, but what it does say to me, it's on the top of their head. So I think if any, if we can find, mobilize people in that area as well, I think that would be effective. Yeah, my, my simple answer when people kind of say, oh, but you are still, you know, um, flying and a freaking flyer. Well, I say, well, we're not fighting 
aviation per se, we are fighting corruption. That usually right. chops them up very quickly. There's one question from Renzo asking, what's, what are the key differences between the um, Adam Benz bill in February 2022 and the new one? Are there already any particular um, amendments? No, so the only changes would be dates to in, in compelling the long-term operating plan to be introduced. So um, we would shift those um, dates. But by at, at this stage, pending further consultation and that briefing that the link I just chucked in there, um, uh, we we may be open for changing it, but that we would only do that when we if we felt like there was a broad community consensus that we should shift anything. Yeah. Um, but by otherwise, it's the same. Um, you you did mention that. Uh... Some of our members reached out to Peter Dutton and his capacity, not just as the leader of the opposition, but also as the member for, for Dixon. And Dixon is affected, especially around Sanford, Sanford Valley. Um, so there was a face-to-face -face meeting that um, wasn't as fruitful as what we had hoped. Um, it was very short and um, there wasn't really anything forthcoming. Uh, there's a question here from, from Troy, if there's any more love from the Teals on the crossbench. Um, I will um, we'll chat to them, actually, um, because there's quite a few Sydney MPs, uh, TL MPs, who, you know, obviously Kylie Tink, the member for North Sydney, um, and a few others uh, who uh, would be directly benefiting from the uh, reforms at Sydney Airport. So we might actually have a chat to them and see if we can get any uh, broad support. Uh, at the very least around the principles that there should, needs to be some limit to the growth of airports. I mean, the other angle here, of course, is emissions reductions, yeah. which is just no way Brisbane Airport Corporation are meeting even the weak emission reduction targets currently in law if they plan on um, doubling flight traffic by 2035. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jeffrey is mentioning, obviously, that, you know, the emotional toll, the, the health and, and mental health toll that a lot of the um, families and, and households are going through and whether there's any kind of way of using that as um, part of submissions, for instance. So one of the things that we've seen, um, ironically, with uh, Anthony Albanese's own private members bill, the one that he introduced in 1996 when he first entered parliament in order to introduce flight caps at Sydney Airport, that led to some sort of inquiries or I don't know what the technical term is, but where, in terms of your knowledge of how Parliament works now, if there is a private members bill introduced and it does go, say, the next step, not obviously it passes straight away, but there are sometimes these opportunities where the crossbench or maybe the Liberals would maybe not agree to it straight away, but they would agree to an inquiry. Is that a possibility for us to then make further submissions that can be put onto Hansard and, and form part of a discussion? It's a good question. So I think, um, unfortunately, because Labor has the numbers in the House, the House as a majority would have to vote to refer it to committee. Um, so I think um, what we want to, and I mentioned other strategies we're thinking of pursuing. I think um, obviously we've got um, our rental inquiry up, which is then of a different aspect of our um, political, uh, political work. But I think what we might investigate, what we're going to investigate in the future is getting a Senate inquiry up um, specifically into flight noise around the country, uh, not just Brisbane, because obviously there's Western, Western Sydney Airport being built at the moment, the issues down in Melbourne and across the country. So I think going into next year, the other thing we might pursue, uh, I would say, is some form of getting up some form of Senate inquiry. Uh, and that, that would be a process by which we could get um, a wave of submissions, I think, um, and put a little bit of pressure on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jeffrey is, um, as you know, the member on BACAC for um, the seat of Brisbane, um, so nominated by, by Stephen Bates. He's asking there, with local and state government elections coming up next year, we will be asking political parties the same questions we asked you. Is there any current discussion amongst the Greens about action in these elections? Mm, great question, Jeffrey. Yeah, well, we'll certainly be running candidates in every um, state electorate in, in, in the state including all the sort of key ones with regards to flight noise. In terms of um, state policy, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we will be investigating state policies that, for instance, could put pressure on Brisbane Airport, whether it's compelling QIC to divest from Brisbane Airport Corporation or use their influence more directly um, uh, over Brisbane Airport Corporation, certainly ending a lot of the subsidies that um, the state government have provided or seem to be providing financial support to Brisbane Airport Corporation, which is alarming. 
Um, and I think at a state level, the other thing we can start to talk about is providing state infrastructure support to complete a high speed rail connection along the East Coast, because the key connection in Queensland would be from Brisbane to the Gold Coast. Um, but we know that there's um, fierce opposition to the idea of a high speed rail connection um, uh, along the Eastern coast of Australia, because it would um, uh, obviously pretty seriously compete with the busiest couple of the busiest flight routes in the developed world. Uh, so if there are any other specific ideas, certainly we'll be adopting a broad policy position at a state and local level that we support the demands that we have at a federal level. Um, but anything, if the people think of anything else specific, please get in touch with our offices and we're happy to feed it into our platform development for the election. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, oh, there's a long post here. Let me just see what the question is. Um, seems like we cannot trust any elected members continue to commitment any uh, one way or the other. Max, what would be your view of the success impact um, if BFC could establish a new party and find candidates at all the upcoming um, federal um, Southeast Queensland state elections? They may not win, but out of all the choices available to me right now, I'd vote for them um, in a heartbeat and send a message. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose there's a bit of a conflict of interest that you're probably not really interested in having further candidates come to the to the ballot sheet. But you yeah. want to comment on that quickly? Sure. Look, it's a fair enough question, Steve. I mean, I think um, the the risk you run, um, I think, is one of the advantages that I think the flight noise um, movement had out of the federal election was that the, obviously this one of the big elements, um, one of the elements that got um, Steve and Libby and I over the line, as everyone knows, of course, was our support for the um, policy positions of the BFPCA. The challenge you have, obviously, from experience, running in state, local and federal elections is enormously resource intensive and very risky, um, because if for whatever reason your support isn't as high as you would hope, that actually gives a justification for the major parties to ignore your issue um, in the long run. Say if uh, flight noise parties only got a few percent, um, that may actually end up having a negative effect on the campaign. Um, so I, I understand the idea, but I, you know, and as, as Marcus said, you have to take partly what I'm saying with a grain of salt because I'm in another political party, but um, maybe my, the input I would have into that strategy discussion is that um, the civil society work BFPCA is doing the resources you're putting into that has already had a big impact. Like there's no way, for instance, that Air Services Australia would be at the very least feigning to do consultation and all of this stuff if it weren't for all of your work up until this point anyway. Uh, and um, I think you're better off applying, um, uh, being independent of the electoral process in the same way you've just described your suspicion of it. Actually, you gain a lot of moral and social weight um, in the arguments that you put when you don't have a direct interest in um, any particular party winning. Um, you know, and that means holding the Greens to account just as much as it means holding Labor and the Liberals to account. But ultimately, that's a strategic discussion for BFPCA and your independent community group, um, yeah. not for a federal member of the Greens. Um, great. I think we'll we'll leave it at that. It's also a good segue for me to talk about the state petition that you're aware that Amy is sponsoring for us at the state parliament that's closing on the 20th. And so... Um, there's still a little bit of confusion around the fact that, yes, aviation is a federal matter, but obviously it so far hasn't stopped Anastasia Palaszczuk as the premier to heavily subsidize um, Brisbane Airport Corporation, attract further airlines and constantly say that um, she has nothing to do with any of the, the compliance. So um, we want to um, increase that pressure on state members and, and state parliament and the state government as well, because in other jurisdictions, um, it did actually make a huge difference if you have either local or state on your on your side. If anyone has still further questions, Max Manny, do you want to put in your email address just so that people can reach out um, if that's okay? Say that again, Marcus. Do you want to catch my contact uh, if, details? If, yeah, if anyone wants to ask any further follow-up questions, yeah, if you want to just pop your email. And yeah, really sorry to hear that you were affected by flight. Um, flight um, pollution in your new place as well. But we do have this complaint link. So do keep that handy um, where you can just, you know, with one click, send a message to Catherine King and all the other senior hegemons. Um, they love hearing from us. In fact, um, I had a one-on-one um, -on -one meeting with Ron Brent, the new um, chairperson of the um, airports advisory committee that uh, a number of our BFPCA representatives are on. I am not, but I had a, uh, meeting with him just for a, for a chat 
And he's very adamant to be taken off that list, which we are currently not doing. Um, I told him that um, the easiest way to make the compliance stop is to actually do your work. Bang on, exactly right. Um, yeah, and I mean, look, I my general feeling, and I and I know, um, I, I just wanted to echo that point, Marcus, that I know that a lot of the regulatory changes occur at a federal level, but the reality is that um, the political parties at a local, state and federal level talk to each other. And any pressure you can apply on any level or take advantage of any election to apply, apply electoral pressure um, will get results at all levels of government. Mm. Uh, and I, I think there's that, there's that broader point to be made as well, that um, you're not just a state, local or federal representative, you're also a representative of your party and the political position your parties take. And so it's completely legitimate, I think, to use any avenue you have. I mean, ultimately, um, this is a community looking to get fight corruption um, in, in systemic corruption, um, but also get an out, a material outcome. And I think it's legitimate to use the electoral process at any level to pursue that. Yeah, great. Um, I'm gonna, um, thanks Max for making time available on a Sunday. It's good to see our, our MPs working hard, even on the weekend. Um, but we'll we'll let you go so that you can continue your your um, moving um, business. And there is the email address in the chat for anyone who wants to copy and paste this and ask any further questions of Max. So thanks again. Um, I'll share my screen now and um, talk through a couple of other things that we got um, on the go at the moment. And the first one, as I just mentioned, is the petition to um, the state parliament. Let me just see if this comes through. Okay. So hopefully you can see my screen. Now I've just opened a browser window with a couple of windows, um, which also means I can't right now see the chat. So if there's any kind of questions I need to get back to, um, if you want to just kind of copy them uh, again in towards the end, it'll be Makes, makes it a little bit easier for me with um, the screen I got here. So the starting point really is our website. I encourage everyone to just make sure that they're actually familiar with what's on our website. Um, it does have this kind of a slideshow on the very homepage where you can always see what are the most important kind of campaigns that we are running. And I'll talk through the first two here um, to start off with. So we have a campaign about the um, regulatory oversight or the lack of regulatory oversight, as well as um, the petition. When you click here on sign the petition, it actually opens up a new window that goes straight to um, the Queensland Parliament. The Queensland Parliament has a um, functionality um, that allows people to submit petitions electronically. And this is the one that we've launched um, at the protest in, in June. And you can see it's closing this week on the 20th. So it's just a week left. Um, the 20th is next, uh, this, coming, this coming Sunday. So it's about uh, excessive noise pollution from Brisbane's flight paths. I won't read this all out, but um, what I think is really notable is the choice of these demands here, the five that are listed as in, your petition is therefore request the house. And we are here requesting that a parliamentary inquiry is established now, these five items, they are specifically um, picked because they are state matters. So yes, aviation is legislated and regulated supposedly at the federal level. But as you can see here, we do have a uh, notable impact on Brisbane school children and students. And we have um, published a um, article that lists not just um, a whole bunch of the schools that are under flight paths, but also mentioned the kind of peer reviewed scientific evidence that suggests that um, aircraft noise has a negative impact on cognition, on learning abilities, even when school children are not complaining. It talks about the human health impact. Health is a state matter. It talks about the donations. And as I mentioned earlier, there is um, Anastasia Palaszczuk's aviation war chest. This is her terminology, not, not mine. This is $200 million of subsidies for the aviation industry coming from state sources. So whilst there's been um, close to 20,000 compliance sent via our um, one-click complaint link, and that includes the Premier, um, a number of people have received boilerplate responses saying this is nothing to do with us. Um, the fourth item here is about um, uh, land use planning. The um, urban planning legislation is also a state matter. 
And finally, we are interested in what's happening in the lead up to the Olympics about the introduction of drone delivery services and air taxis. And now that is already in the making, in the pipeline. And the risk is that without proper um, uh, consultation, without proper um, feedback and engagement from the community and being able to, to obtain a social license to operate, these drone delivery services and air taxis are gonna be introduced into Brisbane um, and we will have no say. It will just be a matter of, um, again, which kind of flight paths are gonna take. And so the drone delivery trials that have already been um, happening for a while in the city of Logan, and I'm told they also now extended to, to Ipswich and the Gold Coast, that um, they are quite aggressive in their expansion and they're flying between 70 to 100 meters. So the altitude is actually much closer and the frequency um, um, of them flying above is, um, is quite high. So you can see we've reached 3,800 signatures, which is pretty good for a state um, parliament um, petition, but there's still a week left. So we are hoping that um, we'll all um, help us in gaining um, more numbers here. And the easiest way to do so is to use that shortcut address um, bfpca.org.au um, forward slash um, QLD petition. If I go back here, the easiest way is also just to go to our website. There's a big button here, but I'm just going to copy this um, address into the chat so that you can see um, that um, it's it's pretty for, uh, straightforward to pass this on to, to families, friends. Um, they should be located uh, in Queensland. Um, you can send it to others as well. I think they can sign, but they are not counted. So the um, rules of the petition are that it needs to be residents of, of Queensland. If I click here on sign this petition, just to show you what happens, there is some terms and conditions, and it will then ask um, for, for these details to be, um, to be filled out. Uh, so hopefully, and you can see there's already quite a number of people that have done that. We'd like to push this even further. Now, there's a second thing that we are asking everyone to do about the petition, which is to email your state member of parliament. Now, we've made this really simple in our um, newsletter that was sent out. It's also now on Facebook. Um, there is a link to this page here, which is the Electoral Commission Queensland. And this is for everyone who's not sure in what electorate they're in. So I'm just going to do a test here, show electorate information. You can search by an address. So I'm just going to put in here 176 Lamington Street. I just made it up. That's actually not my address um, because it will go on um, in this recording. But just to demonstrate what this, how this operates, so it will tell you that um, at that address, the state government electorate is McConnell. So once you know what your state electorate is, you click on the second link that we've provided, and that goes straight to a list of all the members in the Queensland Parliament. And so on this list, I can um, either search by name of the, um, the member, or I can also um, sort this here by the electorate. And so if I now scroll down to M for McConnell, um, you will see here that the member for McConnell is the Honorable Grace Grace. And the easiest way and the quickest way to send an email to your member is to click on this icon here with the letter. And that goes to um, mcconnell at parliament.queensland.government.au. So all the email addresses are uniformly formatted electorate name at parliament.queensland.government.au. If your electorate has two words, there's a dot in it. So for instance, South Brisbane is south.brisbane. What we encourage everyone to do in um, by emailing your member is to first of all um, outline how you personally are affected by the um, flight path noise pollution. Um, you can uh, mention what you've already been doing in order to try and bring about change. You might have submitted compliance to air services. You might have um, submitted compliance and submission to the aircraft noise ombudsman. You might have joined our protest, but it's important that we also mention this um, petition um, on the current um, e-petition platform for the Queensland Parliament. And so what we want everyone to do is ask your state MP to come out in support of this petition. We eventually want to see this being discussed in Parliament um, and for this parliamentary inquiry to be established. 
that is using the powers of the state of Queensland to provide that level of support for our movement across now 226 suburbs. So this is an issue that is really, really widespread and state members here should um, pay attention. So this is the petition campaign. Um, if I go back to the um, website, I also mentioned there's another campaign we are running in parallel, and this was also launched at the, um, at the protest. And this is about um, the lack of regulatory oversight that is being provided by the department um, at the federal level. So there's the Department of Infrastructure and Transport. They are supposed to oversee how CASA as well as ES services are um, performing and the, the way that they act. Now, there is legislation in place that is determining how air services is supposed to perform, and it's the department's role to make sure that they actually do so. Now, we argue that they are not actually fulfilling that role. So this um, complaint is not going to air services, it's not going to the aircraft noise ombudsman, it's going directly to the department, and it's not a noise complaint, which is really, really important. So it's... Um, quite easy to do. You can um, submit your postcode here um, in this ready-made form that we've created. You fill in your details. It has pre-populated um, the complaint email with um, text, and it also has a link there to a much more detailed submission. So it says here the details of my complaint, the steps taken to resolve the complaint, and the outcome I'm asking for outlined in this detailed complaint document. So that's um, included here in this text, and then you just push a button. So the whole thing really only takes um, 10 seconds in order to um, do the submission. You can see we're currently at 863 emails sent. Now there's um, 3,500 people in our noise group. So we're hoping that we are really getting um, this number up. Um, it's good to already have 863, but we'd like to see this go up much, much further. Now there is a strategy behind this. A number of people that have submitted this complaint already early on, um, they have received a response from the department. And the response is really lukewarm um, and in essence says that air services um, can do what they want and the department is not going to interfere. It's, it's very, very um, weak in terms of the, the boilerplate response that a number of us have received now. But that's exactly what we were hoping for because this will now enable everyone that is um, in receipt of this um, response to escalate their complaint to the Commonwealth Ombudsman. Now, that's a different entity and a different office to the Ombudsman we've been dealing with. So a number of you have already been dealing with the Aircraft Noise Ombudsman. That's a specific Ombudsman and that person sits within air services and that Ombudsman only deals with aircraft noise issues. Now, there was a report done in uh, 2021. Um, a number of people continue to submit to the Aircraft Noise Ombudsman. This campaign here is really different. We, for the first time, we will actually be able to escalate our concerns to the Commonwealth Ombudsman, which is its own independent entity. And they have different, um, I suppose, authorities with regards to how they can investigate matters. So we are I'm preparing right now the next step. So after we've done this particular um, first step, which is to comply into the department, you got to wait until you receive the response. And once you receive the response, please keep that email because that will enable you to then escalate matters to the Commonwealth Ombudsman. And we are currently busy preparing that next step of how that compliant will be um, worded. So we'll probably very similarly prepare one of these forms to make your life really easy. Um, there's a couple of other things I'm going to go through um, just to mention. It's um, partly based on the um, BFPCA newsletter. Um, we have put together a discussion forum that's going to happen next Sunday as part of an event um, that's been hosted by QUT. The overall event is a one-day community symposium called Brisbane Transformed, More Than Human Responses to Mianjin's Future. Um, but notably, BFPCA is represented with one panel. There's four panels all up on the day. Um, there is two in the morning, um, one on Verambe and Victoria Park, one on Mount Kutha and the proposed Lumina laser and light show. 
And then our panel for BFPCA is from one to two o'clock. So this is a great opportunity to meet um, not just myself in person, but also some of the um, other community volunteers that have agreed to sit on these various entities. You can see there is um, Sandra, who is a member of the AAB. Um, Sean is the Griffith representative for BACAG. Um, we got um, Caroline there, who's sitting on both BACAG as well as the Archerfield Airport Community Group um, as the representative for Ryan. And we'll have other people in the audience as well. So I'll put this um, link into, into the chat as well, so that um, if you're interested, you can register and come along. Um, if you only want to attend for the afternoon session, say lunch and then the um, flight path noise panel discussion, very happy for everyone to register with the um, concession rate, the concession ticket, the um, normal ticket for the entire day, which includes morning tea, lunch and afternoon tea, is um, forty dollars. So it's, um, I think, good value uh, in order to um, support BFPCA and the other communities that are affected and build a bit of an alliance. So the the link there is um, in the um, in the chat. The other thing that is currently, um, I think, we said we'd close the fourteenth, which is tomorrow. I think if we are adding a couple of extra days extension, it'll be fine. But in essence, we are looking for expression of interest for someone who'd like to step into the volunteer coordinator, the volunteer leader role. Um, and you can see here this little ad that, that Troy has created for us and posted on Facebook. Um, in essence, we are looking for someone that will help us manage the volunteer database that we've now created, um, help us recruit new volunteers, uh, um, look after um, the engagement of volunteers and the communication, and then coordinate some of the um, kinds of actions um, you've seen, for instance, during the protest, that that was a crucial um, um, role that volunteers played in support of the protest. Without our volunteers, it wouldn't have been possible. There is another element to the volunteers, which is that a number of um, volunteers bring specific skills and specific expertise. So we are also looking, for instance, into forming groups of volunteers on certain topics. One of the topics we are currently um, keen on is shareholder activism. So anyone that has, for instance, a background or interest in finance, accounting, superannuation, um, any kind of forensic and investigative skills, that would be really, really appreciated if you come forward. Um, you can register on this form, which is um, forward slash volunteer. It's also on our website when you go to take action. There's a volunteer item here where you get to this form and you just fill in your details so we know how to, how to contact you. Um, the other couple of things I briefly mentioned, there has been a lot of um, media coverage now about the noise action plan. I've done two media interviews with um, Channel 7 and Channel 9. They are on our website. Um, you can see um, that uh, when these interviews are aired, usually the channels only take like a three second sound bite. It's very, very limited. Whereas um, we are now starting to film the unedited, like the entire interview, and we put the unedited version of that video on our website. That allows you to actually listen to the whole thing and you can compare it with what you, with what you then see on the um, evening news. Um, so that's on our website under videos, under news and updates, there's an item videos. That page also has all our other videos. So you can, for instance, see the speeches from the protest, um, the double standards between Albanese and Catherine King in 96 and 2023. Um, so there's quite a bit of video material that we've now accumulated. We continue to ask everyone um, if you're able to, to um, chip into our Flight Path Noise Fighting Fund. Um, that will enable us to um, support BFPCA's operations. We are um, paying for ads in the community um, street press, in the My Village News, in the local bulletin, in the um, um, Sanford Village um, newsletter and so forth. And we um, use this in order to cover our expenses, um, social media kind of ads. We um, obviously had quite a number of expenses for the protest. Uh, so if you're able to, we really, really appreciate your support for the um, BFPCA Fighting Fund. We've also got a, um, another fundraiser, which is the shop. 
uh, if you are wanting to prepare for our next protest and come with the right um, gear and merchandise, um, this is uh, an, a shop that is print on demand. So the items are manufactured and produced in essence as you're placing an order. We don't keep any of the stock, which makes it really, really easy for us. Um, and they're quite quick. So we've had people order um, T-shirts, for instance, and they usually arrive within three or four days. So they're pretty, um, pretty good. The um, final thing I mentioned is that in the lead up to the protest, we publish these 60 reasons to protest. And this is really a really, really um, um, useful uh, go-to point and, and repository, especially for those that have just signed up to BFPCA that are not familiar with um, the whole history of what we've uncovered so far. So there is a lot of material, but the easiest way is to actually just go to this page and search for particular words. Like if you're interested around the community engagement, you can find articles. If you're interested around the noise data and how it's been flawed on purpose, you can find articles on this. So this go-to page is really handy to have this overview of all the kinds of things that we've uncovered so far. Um, and it's backed up with sources, with web links, with FOI documents, with um, references to Senate estimates and, um, and so forth. So very, very good resource to use, especially if there's people that are still kind of umming and ahhing and doubting um, that um, this is really just like a NIMBY issue and um, for us to all go away. We really have to move the conversation away from it being about the noise. And this is um, a way of doing this because it's really about the underlying issues of being misled, of having um, the wrong noise forecasts presented, of um, corrupt conduct. And um, this page goes into quite a bit of detail about these um, different elements. So I think I'll pause here and leave enough time for some for some questions as well. Thank you all so much for um, for your attention for um, me to go through all this material in one big hit.